Good morning, Overflow Church. Happy Friday. It is so good to be on with our friends this morning. It is a wonderful, beautiful Friday, and we just love get, coming on every day at 10 a.m. and giving these devotions where we can just share some about who we are in Christ and the hope that we carry together. And so this morning, the um, I see some friends coming on. Hello, friends. Good morning. Happy Friday. So good to see you. Uh, this morning, the devotion I want to share is this, that we are the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Now, when I share this, some people love hearing that we're the bride of Christ, but some people almost get offended. And it's usually uh, manly men who are rough and tough, hard workers. And they look and say, <laughs> they'll say something like, don't call me a bride. So if you're there this morning and I say, we're the bride of Christ, and you say, don't call me a bride, I got to say two things to you this morning. Number one, I didn't call you a bride. Jesus did. And if Jesus called you a bride, there's a profound reason you need to not dismiss. The second thing I'd really challenge us to this morning, if you're one of those that hear I'm the bride of Christ and it throws you off a little bit, I'd say don't get lost in the gender picture that makes you miss the point. When we define ourselves often as, as, as the tough, the strong one, the, the rock, the provider, we can take on a burden that we were never intended to carry. It can easily become a false bravado that has to come through, that has to save the day, that can never show emotion or weakness. I have to provide. I have to come through. I'm the hero. And I want to humbly say to you, friend, if that's you, um, that's not the story that we're in. Uh, there is a rescue taking place here, but you're not the rescuer. You're the one being pursued and saved and healed and delivered. And the glorious truth is when we allow Jesus to be that, that rock in our lives, we actually become strong. We become like a rock. We become tough. We become rescuers to many, but only to the extent that we allow ourselves to be rescued and held by him as his bride. In Ephesians chapter four, I just want to share briefly this morning, five truths about being Jesus's bride that transforms us. This is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 32, and it says this. It says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but he nourishes it and he cherishes it just as Christ does the church, because we're members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, but what I'm saying is referring to Christ and the church. Did you get that? You see, all this time we thought it was talking about something else. And he said, no, really what this is about when I talk about marriage, when I talk about a husband and a bride, what you see on earth is only a shadow. The reality is found in Christ. And all of that that I just read is really about Jesus and you. And so five glorious truths that it means to be the bride of Christ. The first is this, that we have been invited into adoration and intimacy. The... um. 18 years ago, I married my wife, and I love on our dresser, I've got a picture of our wedding day. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do so. I'm going to run off script for just a second. I want you to see something. Hang on. Stay with me. You're not getting a glitch. Okay. So this on my dresser. This is me and my bride on our wedding day. And I want you just to look at her right now. Isn't she absolutely radiant? Doesn't she just shine? And I gotta, I gotta tell you something. It's not just there in that picture that I watch my wife shine. It's every day. She is the substance and the beauty that fills our home with light. You know, in the days leading up to our wedding, Jill and I had people tell us, older couples counseled us, and they said, well, you know, you guys are affectionate right now. You guys are around each other right now, but you just wait. You just wait 
You know, you're going to have kids and bills and you're going to settle into the mundane and, and you just wait. And we made a decision. We said, we're not going to wait and see. We're going to go and live. We're going to live a marriage of full intimacy. I remember on our wedding day 18 years ago, I sent my best man, Pastor Chris was the best man of my wedding, and I sent him with long stem roses and a note for my wife. And a few minutes later, Pastor Chris came back with tears in his eyes, and I said, what, what happened? I thought maybe, maybe, it went, maybe it went south. I don't know. You never know when you send Pastor Chris in for something. I said, what happened? And he said to me, he said, if you could just see how she lit up about you, she grabbed my arm and said, you tell him, I love him. <laughs> I got to tell you, after 18 years of marriage, my wife is the love of my life and my closest friend. She's the one that I love to live adventure and intimacy and adoration is what marks our story. I want to give a word to anybody who's getting married. I'd say, don't wait and see, go and live. And listen, that's a word to you with your marriage to Jesus. You don't have to test the waters with Jesus to see how is it actually going to work out? How is it going to come together? No, Jesus in every way has you, loves you, holds you. You don't have to wait and see. You can go and live. If you could only see how Jesus' eyes are lighting up today, Jesus is grabbing Gabriel and he's looking. He says, you see them? You see them right there? Tell them I love them. You've been invited with Jesus into intimacy and into adoration. In this passage in Ephesians 5, five times it talks about the marriage you have with Jesus and it says this, love, 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 cherish. That's what your father feels for you. You've been invited into intimacy. A second truth I want to give you this morning about living in this marriage with Jesus, living as Jesus' bride, is you've been lavished with all of heaven's riches. Listen, we married the king of all kings. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his ottoman. He holds the whole world in his hands. He has all riches. He married you and he didn't sign a prenup. Come on, somebody, that's good. Jesus married you, he has all riches of the world, and he did not sign a prenup. He said, all that I have, if you remember the story of the prodigal son, the father of the prodigal says to his son, didn't you know all I have is yours? It's already yours, all the riches of heaven, his precious promises. You've already been given all you need for life and godliness. He's holding nothing back from you. Psalm 37, 4 says, delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Did you know the greatest desire of your heart, the greatest need of your heart is Jesus himself. So in Psalm 37, 4, what he's saying is this, when you delight in me, I've come to give you all of me unbounded forever. Heaven's riches have been bankrupted for you because you are the bride. He says, listen, how will God not now all graciously give you all things? I promise you, he's not holding out on you this morning. He's lavishing you with all you need. You've been invited into intimacy. You've been lavished with riches. But the third one, listen, to be Jesus's bride, you've been led into complete restoration and renewal. And so I told you, I'm going to talk about my bride some this morning because I just adore this girl. And the biggest picture we can give of us and Jesus is the bride. So Jill and I just celebrated our 18th anniversary. And we've had this tradition since we got married that every year we alternate years and one of us surprises the other with what we're going to do. So the entire trip, our anniversary trip, all the details are disclosed. I mean, it's super top secret where we're going to go, what car we're going to rent, where we're going to stay, all the activities we're going to walk through. And so this year, 2020 was my year, and everything was closed. And so I reached out to my kids. I said, listen, we've got to rally and give, uh, give your mom and give my bride uh, an experience to remember. And so we transformed our entire home into a two-day Ammon Spa and Retreat. Uh, my son Bradley, he made a, a cinema, literally made like a welcome video to a movie theater. Josiah was the activity director and gave this hilarious presentation and led us through games. Uh, Andrew and Gabriel worked as my head and assistant chefs as I put together the most elaborate meals I've made in my life. And then the highlight was my daughter Anna was the lead over the spa. And so for two days, they just showered my bride with head and shoulder and foot massages because we knew that what she needed most was rest and restoration. I want you to understand something. 
in Jesus's marriage vows to you. If you look at Ephesians 5, by the way, Ephesians 5 is Jesus's marriage vows to you. And if you look at his marriage vow to you, he said, I committed to make you whole. I committed to sanctify you. It's why self-improvement plans are always going to be exhausting and they're never going to arrive anywhere. They're always going to be a treadmill leading nowhere because you can't do it. He leads you to still waters. He restores your soul. And his vow is this. When he says, you're my bride, he says this. Listen, this is my vow. I won't stop until you're whole. I won't stop until you're complete. I'm going to present you without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Listen, you're going to look better than your Facebook emoji. All right? You're going to look amazing before your king. He says, I wash you with the water of the word. I tenderly cleanse you. I want you to understand Jesus doesn't blast us like a pressure washer. No, he invites us to a spa. And when he says that he washes over us with the word, listen to me, Jesus himself is the word. He's washing over you with himself again and again and again. And so maybe right now you feel like that man that was touched by Jesus who was blind and he said, Jesus touched him and he said, okay, I can see something now, but it's like trees. It's, it's really distorted. I can't quite see right. I look and God, I can see some truth about you. I can see some glory about you. I can see so much to be excited about, but it's blurry. I can't see right. Listen, what Jesus says, his vow is that I'm going to touch your eyes again and again and again and again. I'm going to wash you with the water of the word until you're whole. That's what it means to be the bride of Christ. A fourth truth to be a bride of Christ is that you're gloriously fed and today you're provided for. Christ is your husband. It says he nourishes you. He feeds you. Our Bible promises my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. What does it mean? It means Jesus comes to feed you and protect you and provide for you. So this is the question I'd ask. Are you trying to hold the world together today? Where is it that the weight of the world is on your shoulders? Where is it in your world you're saying, if it's to be, it's up to me, and I've got to do it, and I've got to hold together, and I've got to figure this out, and all these people are depending on me, and this is the question I'd ask you if you'd recognize you're the bride of Christ today. Would you just stop? We can't even see where we're going tomorrow. But he clothes the flowers of the field, and he feeds the birds of the air, so how much more, how much more will he provide for you, the bride he delights in? Would somebody today just breathe and recognize that he has you? Would you release the burden? Would you just say to him, Lord, I'm sorry for believing it's all up to me, because actually that's me saying that I don't believe you're going to come through on your wedding vows, and you will. And so this is the hope I give you this morning. Jesus already came as the Savior of the world, so you don't have to be the Savior of anything. Jesus already has you, and he already holds you. And I want to share one last glorious truth. To be the bride of Christ is to be invited into oneness. He ends this passage and he says this. He says, I've called for you to leave and to cleave and to become one flesh with me. I've had the opportunity through the years to marry many couples. And I'm not a polygamist. I mean, I'm the officiant for the ceremony, right? I'm married to my wife, but I've married many couples. I'm in a weird mood today. And I tell them when they, when they go on their honeymoon, I say, when you come back, all of us are going to see that something has changed. There's a union. There's a fusing. There's a melding of souls where you actually become one. That's why divorce, regardless of whose fault it is, is so painful because it's taking one person and making them two again. And it's so sad because I've seen so many people use the Bible as a weapon when it comes to divorce, that, that they pour shame and guilt on someone divorced. They'll say, well, Jesus said it wasn't that way from the beginning. But listen, I want to remind you right now that everything we see on earth is a shadow of the reality in Christ. Did you ever consider that when Jesus talks about marriage and divorce, the truest picture he's talking about is his marriage to you? He's saying, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never cheat on you. I will never prioritize another passion or treasure or activity or interest over you. I will never stop looking for and listening to and cherishing and surprising you. I will never walk out on you. See, we've got to stop shouting at people for how they're struggling in the shadows of their marriage and invite them to see the glorious reality of their marriage to Jesus. And as we do that, we're going to watch the marriages here on earth heal. So I want to say to you, if you've walked through or are walking through a broken marriage, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. There's hope and there's grace and there's beauty. But I want to tell you more than that. 
where the shadow broke your heart, where the shadow broke your heart, the reality never will. Your true groom is standing before you and will never leave, no matter how ugly it gets, no matter how much you struggle. The very last prayer Jesus came and gave was, make them one with us. And I want to remind you seven times in the Gospel of John, it says Jesus only spoke what the Father was already saying. He won't stop. He won't stop until there's no distance between his heart and yours. I am my beloved's. He is mine. I am secure in him forever and ever and ever. See, this is why I get so passionate when people say, well, don't tell me I'm the bride of Christ. No, you have to know you're the bride of the Christ because he's the hero of the story. He lavishes his love on you. He wants to restore you. He wants to nourish you. He wants to feed you right now. He adores you in your weakness and he cherishes you and that changes everything. And so right now in this moment this morning, I just wanna stop and I just wanna pray for you. I just ask right now, Jesus, thank you for the glorious picture that you've given of what it is for us to be your bride. I call right now in Jesus' name for every place there's shame and guilt and pain and broken relationships to go. I ask right now for all people that you'd wash over them with yourself. You are the word. Wash over them with the word. I call right now, Jesus. And from where you are, listen, if you've been holding the burdens of the world on your shoulders, I call right now. Would you just hold out your hands? Just release. I call right now for your children to know your adoration. That they would know that you adore them. That they would remember that it's not a feeling. It's a fact. It doesn't matter if they feel it or not today. You've made a vow to them that you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. That you hold them. That you have them. That you have plans for their life to prosper them and not to harm them. And you won't stop until it's completed. They can breathe. They don't have to be the savior of anything. Would you lay down your burdens right now? I call right now for Jesus to release healing and renewal over you. I'd ask you, where is it this morning that you just need to be held, that you need to be vulnerable, that you need to be able to just know that he sees you, he chooses you with every wrinkle, with every blemish. He sees everything and he chooses you today to wash over you. And oh, Father, I just pray this morning that you give us new eyes. That when we walk around in all of creation, that we'd understand that all over the place, there are long stem roses that you're sending just for us. Did you know that Jesus paints the sunset just so you'll see it? Those are his long stem roses to you saying, I love you, I see you. And I just ask, Lord, that you'd wash over us in a way that when we see the beauty of creation in relationships and in life and a billion reasons to love and laugh and celebrate, that we'd stop at that moment like my bride did 18 years ago. We grab onto your hand and say, I love you. Jesus, it's a joy to be your bride. We release every burden. We choose to walk with you in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. We are the bride of Christ, and that changes everything. Now listen, today we've got a devotional, an intimacy devotional that's right here. There's a PDF you're going to see on this file where you can spend a few minutes quiet with the Lord today and just receive this. And I encourage you, as you do, to share this word we love you, Overflow Church. We look to see you Sunday morning at, at nine o'clock. And actually, we're launching a new service Saturday night at seven o'clock. So we'll be here Saturday night at seven and then Sunday at nine, 11, and one. So you can catch us on our services right there and it won't be too long before we're back face to face again. We love and bless you. Have a wonderful Friday.